Hi, um, this is going to be a video about jo joysticks on the TRS-80. Um, and when I say TRS-80, I mean the whole line of TRS-80s. Um, basically, I don't know if you can see this here, but I'm using an emulator. So this basically emulates the color computer or the color computer 2. And its predecessor was the TRS-80 and the name stayed with it. Um, I don't know much about the original TRS-80, but the color computer 1 and the color computer 2 are both um, TRS-80s. Um, they're just later versions. Um, the one and the two and the three, they actually made a third one. They were all small, um, almost like a, a typewriter sort of thing. And you could either hook it up to your TV or a monitor, you know, and you had a choice of tape drives and disk drives and... Uh, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but this can be done with the Color Computer 1 or the Color Computer 2, so I'll stick with that. If you have one of those computers, you're lucky. I wish I still had mine, but I got rid of it a long time ago, and I had a, a Color Computer 2, so that was really my first computer in the 1980s, and I loved it, but... When you're young, you can't really understand a lot of this stuff, so... Anyways, this is going to be, like I said, about how to use joysticks. So we're going to write a program here, and we're going to call it Joystick. And, um... <clears throat> so what does a joystick do? Well, it controls things on the screen. You know, you can go in, um eight different directions up down left right and vertically four ways and they had one button like an atari controller had one button and so you can utilize that to do almost anything um, so Okay, so uh, we're going to learn how, how to, to program your joystick. And you're not really programming the joystick, but you're programming your computer to recognize the joystick. So how this is done is very simple. Okay, for joystick number one, there's port one and port two. We're just going to do port one today you just basically you pick a string um, actually it's not a string it's a variable so a equals joyce uh, a equals joystick zero in parentheses so it's joy stk in parentheses zero and that controls the left and right. Okay, so I am going to go on to another screen here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, if you see this little screen in here. Okay, there's a number 31. There's two 31s there. Now, when I hit left and I hold it, the value goes to zero. Okay? If I center the joystick, I have a number 31, and if I move it to the right, I have a number 63. Okay, so left is 0, right is 63, and centered is 31. So what we're going to do here is we're going to define our joystick. And before we do that, we are going to make B equal to joystick func function 1. 
and that is going to control our up and down movement. So back to the screen here, here is our up and down movement. When I go up, it's zero. When I go back to the center, it's 31. And when I go down, it's 63. So it's the same thing um, for both, but you're going in different directions. So now that we define our left and right and our up and down, we're going to decide what happens when the joystick is moved. So we're going to go end up with four if-then statements. So we're going to say if A equals zero, now if you remember that was left, then this is going to be very simple today. Print left, okay, five. Or if A equals, uh, what was it, 63, then print right. And this is just going to collaborate the joystick. You're probably familiar, if you play video games on emulators, you're familiar with joystick collaboration. That's basically what we're doing right now. We're collaborating it so that it works with the computer. So now we're going to put if B equals zero. I forgot which one that was. So I'm going to have to check it here. That would be our up and our down would be 63. So if B equals zero, then print up seven if B equals 63, then print down, okay? So we're gonna test our little program here and see how well it works. So, I mean, this is very um, beginner. This is as beginner as you can get. So we defined our joystick as A and B values. Now A can only be one value at a time and B can only be one value at a time. So we defined A as 0 or 63 and B as 0 or 63 with the corresponding commands. And when you put it all together, we are going to go to, now this is important. Um, anytime you have a statement like this, the computer is very fast. And if you don't go back to the beginning of your, your program here, the computer will just zip right through here. And if you put go to eight, you're going to get nothing because it's faster than you are. Um, you will not have time to move your joystick at all in, in the, this, the time that it reads through this program. So it has to go, it has to cycle. This is going to cycle so fast that it's going to almost be like, um, I don't know what the word is. It's, it, it's just going to, it's, it's going to create its own little entity right here in this part of the program. And the if then statement will decide what happens after that. Now, it, you could put a go to here, you could put a graphic here, you could put anything here. I'm just showing you very simply how this is going to work. Now, I, I'm running the program. Now, I'm going to hit left. See how many times that I'm going to hold it. If I hold it, it's going to keep printing left, right, up, down. You get your motion. Um, I can go vertically and I get up and right. I can go vertically the other way. I get up and left, down and left. Like I said, there's eight directions, right and down. I hope you understand how this is working. Um, it's a little hard to see, um, but I think you can get an idea of what's going on here, right? I'm just hitting right and it's very smooth. You can, it's repetitious. It's not like you hit the joystick once and then you have to lift up. You can hold it there, up, 
down, right, left. Okay, see what's going on here? Vertical. Um, it's your joystick is now collaborated. And the final thing I'm going to do in this short program is show you how to get um, a use of your button. Because like I said, there's a button. So what we're going to do is we're going to renumber this program and create a space where I can fit in the button command. Um, now this box shows what the button command is. It's P. Um, you can make, I'm going to, I just chose P here, but you can make it anything you want. So it's going to peek into the memory and it's going to look at this location here. That's where the button function is stored for this controller. And if P equals 254, okay, that means the button's being activated. If it equals anything else, that means the button is not being activated. So we actually need um, to create... Um, I'm going to have to keep this up because the number is um, a little hard to remember here. But I'm going to create a space here. So I'm going to renumber this so that um, there's a space there. So now we have four. Now you have to keep all of your functions on top and all of your if-then statements under all of the functions. You can't have them crisscrossed all over the place because it won't work right. So A and B are already used. <clears throat> so I'm going to say C is the button. And that's going to peek into memory area 65,000. Uh, excuse me. Um, it's going to peak into area 65,000. Uh, where is it here? 65,280. 280. 65,000. 65,280. That is the, okay, my list. So it's going to peek into that memory location, and if it sees a number other than 254, it won't do a thing. But it, if, if that number change, that's, this is the number that's stored in that memory location. Actually, it's a different number. I think it might be 252. And when you hit the button, it changes to 254. That's when it knows you're pressing the button. This is machine language here. I, I know very little to nothing about machine language. I know a little bit. This is about as much as I know. Okay. So we have to create number nine. We're going to have our button. It's going to be FC equals 254. You're hitting the button. Then print button. Now you can attach that to anything. I'm just attaching it to a print statement because this is just showing you how this works. But like I said, you can do anything with it. And maybe we'll go a little farther. I don't know how well you're following along. But um, right, left, up, down, okay. Button. Hitting the button. See how it says button? Right, button. That could be a fire button. That could be anything. So um, now um, let's see here. We'll just change this a little. I'm not going to go crazy in this video with this um, because I didn't plan plan to. I don't have anything planned for it, so I'm not going to go nuts with it right now. I'm going to change this to CLS um, one. I'm not sure what CLS one is. Let's do two. CLS one might not be a color. What's CLS one? Yeah, it's just green. 
so we don't want that. CLS2, at least that's a color. CLS3, we'll start with CLS3. And that's just a clear screen command. Edit um, five CLS3, that's blue. So if I go left, instead of saying left, it's going to turn the screen blue. If I go right, we're going to make it turn the screen red. Oh, what a nightmare. What is going on here? See it? Oh. CLS4, we're going to change it red. So we have left is going to be blue, right is going to be red, up will be, um, what is up going to be? Uh, we can do white. So doesn't want to work for me here. CLS um, 5 should be white. We'll check that real quick. Yep. Uh, so we just have down. Instead of printing. Oh, print CLS. Oh, that's bad. Um, I'm making errors, but I will fix them. CLS 6 will be or I mean down down will be uh, orange and then we have to pick one more color here no actually that's it so we have left blue right red up is white and down is orange now I didn't take these print commands out those need to come out so I have to edit again. Now I'm just going to delete them. Okay, with a few keystrokes here. Just. Alright. And one more. Now we are good, good to go. So the last thing is the button. We don't want to print button, that's boring, okay? So we are going to kill this statement and from this point on, and we're gonna insert something else. Now, I could have it make a sound or I can have it play some music. Um, I'm just going to have it make a sound, but let's see what sound do we want here. Um, I hardly heard that. Let's see. Let's try something else. Uh, 255 is the limit. Wow, hear that? That's almost like a, I don't know what to call that. Let's try 155. That's a little better. There we go. That's the one we're going to use. 200 comma 5. So we're going to stick that in here. Insert sound. 200, what was it, comma 5 I hope? Now we're going to run this. Now up, you get white, left, blue, right. Um, that's supposed to be orange. No, that's red. Red, blue, white, orange, white, red. There's red, orange, blue, white. See, this is all being done with my joystick now. I collaborated it to change the screen color according to direction um, and now we're going to test our button hear that every time
how I press the button, I'm getting that sound. So we're almost to the point of where we made a video game, but not quite. <laughs> we we almost have a video game here. We just don't have a sprite or a graphic on the screen. Um, I'm not going to get into that in this video. It can be done relatively easily. If you want to see that, let me know. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, have a great day.